Welcome back to Best Practice, my video masterclass series where we learn the art of practicing and how to develop an artist's technique. This week I'm presenting my best tips for improving your sense of rhythm and pulse. Tip number five is all about mastering the relationship between two and three. Now two against three or three against four are the most common sort of rhythmic combinations that we have to deal with. One way to work on this is to practice the Galamian acceleration scale. And this is a system of scale practice where you start with two notes per bow, then the bow being the same length, you split it up into three notes per bow, and then four, and then six, eight, 12, 32, et cetera. Um, this way, the bow speed never changes, but you're fitting more notes into the bow. And going from two to three to four to six, you're really practicing that relationship we talked about. So. I'd go all the way up three octaves and then come back down. Now when I finished two notes per bow, I would jump directly into three. So I'd play that up and down, and then I would transition to four notes per bow. And I'd go to six notes per bow. Then to eight. Then I'd go to 12. And so on. Being able to instantly lock into the next pattern as you switch from one to the other uh, will really test your rhythm and your sense of pulse. Tip number six also has to do with two against three, but in a different way. Uh, basically, the idea is to imagine the rhythm of a passage as being in a different meter. So if the passage is in duple, um, I'm going to imagine that the passage is in triple meter, meaning that my fingers feel every third beat. And this can have a surprising effect on the evenness of your playing. So if we take a passage like this, for example, You can imagine it as a series of 16th notes. And I have a feeling that I'm not playing it very evenly. Um, so if I imagine that passage is actually in triplets, it would sound like this. So you can hear that that's actually a little bit more even. And so I encourage you to record yourself playing one way and the other. Try to keep the same speed and listen to how different the evenness is, how different the string crossings sound. Um, I feel like when I do it in three, my string crossings are much smoother. So you can use this for any kind of passage or run that uh, has fast notes and string crossings um, where you feel like the evenness is, is not quite there. Tip number seven is the concept of being on the back of the beat. The most common issue people have with rhythm is that they rush. Dragging is actually not as, as much of an issue for people, especially when you're playing kind of busy things with, with many bowings and fast notes. So the idea is to take more time on every note and sort of pull more sound from each note. Now the way you can practice this is to set a metronome and try to have your notes fall just after the metronome click so that the notes are a little bit lazy. So you can hear that I was a little bit behind and it was relatively consistent. To make this a bit harder, I can play six tuplets, for example, and put my click only on the last note.
tip number nine is to try to feel the rhythm or the pulse of a piece um, by allowing it to move your body. So this could mean anything from kind of swaying back and forth with a certain rhythm or even a little more active dancing motion and sometimes it helps to exaggerate it. So if we look at the gig from the D minor partita of Bach, I can play it without doing any sort of motion in my body. But I find it more difficult to feel the rhythm, to feel the pulse of that piece. And basically I, I feel like I'm playing an etude and I'm, I'm really trying to keep the rhythm. And of course the music will suffer in that case. Now if I allow my body to move a bit with the music, um, I find that it's easier to keep the rhythm, but also easier to achieve the character that I want, this kind of folk-like dance character where it's not entirely metronomic. This is the basic idea of pulse. So important beats fall where you would expect, but certain things in between can be a little stylized. Tip number 10 is to save bow on slurred notes and not allow the final note on a slur to become clipped, to become shortened. Um, this is a problem I often see and basically at the end of a bow we're already anticipating the next bow and unless you're conscious of that um, it's easy to start shortening that note and that can really kill a phrase and kill the beauty of a line. So a good way to counteract that is to save bow at the beginning of that slur and to allow that last note to be a little longer than you think it needs to be. Um, the general idea here is that the equipment should not control us. We should control the equipment, right? There are all sorts of very awkward things about playing the violin and if each one of those little hurdles is controlling our rhythm, controlling um, the way we sing a phrase, um, how natural things sound, then we're in trouble. So this is a little trick to kind of counteract that tendency. That's it for this video. Feel free to leave your comments and questions down below. If you've enjoyed these masterclass videos, do consider becoming a supporter on my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. See you next time.